Hey guys, Sayuri here. I know you guys have been waiting for this video, but in order to do O3, all you gotta do is... In all seriousness, welcome to the video where I explain to you guys how to get your first complete in O3. And I won't go too in depth, but I wanna give you guys some information so you're well aware of what's going on. Hopefully, you can learn from this video. Before we get into the video, I just wanna say thank you guys so much for 200 subscribers and 2.2K views on the O3 loot montage. That is insane numbers coming from this channel. We've gained over 60 subs from one video alone, which is crazy. So I really wanna thank you guys so much. I don't know how I can repay you guys, but one day maybe I'll do a giveaway if I have enough things to actually give away because last one I just got hella broke. But anyways, I won't be talking about the mini bosses in this video, but I'll make a separate video to give you guys some more tips on how to do those real quickly. But this is a generalized guide, so don't expect so much specificality on some phases and etc. So enjoy the video. First thing you want to think about in O3 is what classes you're going to bring. So I would bring a warrior or a priest. The main reason I would bring those two classes is because priest, you can honestly just heal most of the non sickened damage that comes from the boss in general and also warrior you're able to speedy through all of the shotguns that he has especially run away from him if you get into a very sticky situation if you don't like those classes i would also suggest a trickster is because he's able to teleport away from his shots and if you're near him obviously and also you're able to use his decoys for some phases whenever he's chasing so it's really good to bring a trickster as well so right after choosing the classes that you want for O3, we're going to talk about his phases. And honestly, everything before Exalted is kind of irrelevant. What I mean irrelevant is that before Exalted, you can literally run away from him really easily and his shots do well between 100 to 200, so it's not that bad. When he exalts, his damage can go from at least 200 to 300 damage. I would just say to make sure you watch for the chat box whenever he switch phases and be well aware where he's at throughout the whole dungeon because you can be anywhere and he can just teleport on you and it's kind of scary so just distance away from him as much as possible if you want to get your first completion. The best phases for damage would be Splendor in which he throws grenades up in the air and what you have to do is dodge in a certain pattern and the pattern is right left down up and when he's exalted he'll do another phase and then you just go right after that panic and scream is a great phase for damage he puts on bomb artifacts in a pattern which is it's at a 45 degree angle so you can literally just go left and right and you should be fine there's other phases where you can stagger him such as accept your fate shield bashes melts strike you down and gaze some of these phases are scary so i would just suggest just running away from him as much as possible and just be sure to get there when he gets staggered because you want to end it quickly so getting a lot of dps in is great only on outer rotations is where you can stagger him so make sure if you're doing an inner just stay back or just follow him across the map some good dps phases before exalt would be slashes and cosmos but you should be well aware if you're doing it in exalt because he can do a lot of damage so stay away from him there is nothing wrong with playing like a pussy in this game honestly if you're gonna complete, you gotta do what you gotta do, buddy. Here comes Dance Phase is a phase where he puts bomb artifacts near the middle and on the outers of the map and also pet stasis portals also shoot out as well, so you gotta watch out for those. And basically, he just does regular phases while those are shooting out in the inners and the outers, so make sure to watch out for those and just push them towards Exalted Phase. This is the part of the video that I talk about Celestial and it's when he shoots a barrage of shots and you have to like dodge in a certain pattern depending on which flag you sit near or area. So I prefer the bottom side of the map but if you're like people like Glef or some other people that like going on the left side or the right side go ahead how you do it. If you die to Celestial it's okay. Most new players die to Celestial pretty easily you just have to practice the patterns a lot there is a program on the reddit page where you're able to practice celestial in like a simulation thing it's like low-key not accurate but it gives you a good representation for the actual run people say that the simulation is like harder but like i think it's easier so it's like opinionated really best tips i can give you for celestial is there's gaps between the pest stasis shots which are behind you and you usually go through the gaps and just dodge whatever is shooting in front of you so that's the best way i can tell you how to do celestial 
After Celestial, you just gotta pray that you survive and dodge every single shots. And in addition, there's Heavens, a long ray of beam shots that like can go across the map from left to right, right to left, or even from the middle. And usually, you can time this by like waiting for like the animation of the laser beam to go down and then walking over. Be well aware, you can die to any phase when he's exalted because his damage is like two times the amount when he wasn't exalted. When he's in Heaven's phase, he can mix it up with any other phase before he was exalted so it can be really cancerous to actually like survive the heavens and his shots at the same time usually people like die to stupid things like cosmos with heavens because you can't really see like the beams and the shots at the same time because they mix in really well together pretty much with heavens and every other phase just run away from him so if he's on the right side just stay on the left you know pretty much running away dodging whatever he has Every so often, there's minions of orcs that spawn on each end of the map and it gives them invulnerability. So what you have to do is whenever they spawn, make sure to DPS them so like he doesn't get invulnerable anymore. So you do a lot of DPS. Once you do enough DPS to O3 and you hit him to a certain amount of HP, like the last 5% or so, he'll shoot beams across the map and this signifies that you've basically beaten O3. Hooray. So you gotta just hit the boss, wait for the beams, pray that you probably get a white bag, but if not, good luck on your next run, guys. So that's probably going to conclude the video. Hopefully, I was decently in-depth about things. But if you like the video, be sure to leave a like. Comment down your thoughts, ideas, whatever it may be. I'll see you again.